Hey there, Streakers. Here we are at the end of another day. At least it's the end of my day. It might be the beginning of your day or the middle of your day. Depends on when you listen to this. But welcome to the Streaking Podcast. I'm Jeff Downs, and I'm looking forward to discussing with you consistency one more time. A couple of interesting experiences happened in the last couple of days that I'd like to share with you and talk about how streaking has basically helped through those particular areas. I'm not going to give you what those experiences are just yet, but I will say welcome to the Streaking Podcast and let's start streaking. What is streaking and why should you do it? Streaking is how you set up personal winning streaks. Look at who you want to be and what you need to do to become that person. This is streaking. I'm Jeff. And I'm Jamie. And we are streakers. Through 30 years of marriage and seven children, we have learned the power of consecutive consistency or streaking. To start streaking is simple. You just follow these three laws. Make it laughably simple. Keep a record and join the streaking community. Streaking is your hidden superpower. With it, you will consistently progress and grow in whatever area of life you want. In this podcast, Jeff and I will share all the fun, exciting, serious, solemn, wonderful parts of family, spiritual, professional, and personal life, and how streaking powers it all. So join us in the conversation, join the movement, and start streaking today. So we had a sad event that happened in the family a couple of days ago. I didn't talk about it back then because I wasn't quite ready to. I didn't know exactly what it is that I wanted to say about the sad event. We had um, our little toy poodle, dog of 13 years, had him since he was a puppy. Um, He had degraded to the point, his quality of life was to the point that uh, he was deaf. His, his mouth, he was not really eating. He was losing weight. And we thought, you know what? It's only a matter of time. And I, I think it's time to go ahead and let him go to put him down. So as a family, we decided that would be done a couple of days ago. And we went to just a, a fantastic place. There is an urgent care for small pets, which they take care of minor injuries, some of the major injuries, and then also end of life events. We went in, they greeted us, they asked us what we were there for, because you don't make an appointment with these places. You just, you just walked in and, uh, they said it was, and it was vital veterinarian, vital veterinarian, great, great place. But they, but we just told them it's, we had, or my, my son had in his hands, uh, Coco, which is the name of our little toy poodle, tiny little thing. I mean, he was very comfortable with my son. My son absolutely loved him. So did all of our family members. I mean, he was with us for 13 years. Had him in. Anyway, she asked, the person who greeted us asked, what are you here for? And I said, it's time. And she immediately knew. They ushered us into a room. There was four of us, my two sons, my wife and I, Jamie and I, ushered us into the room where we sat where, and then they closed the door and after a minute or two, because there was another uh, customer that they were helping in the lobby, I think their little dog had gotten in a fight, had a, uh, a gash that they were stitching up, came in, said, so it's time. I said, yes. And she said, well, I'm so sorry. And I know that there, this is hard to do. And it is also something that is going to be peaceful and a process that you'll appreciate, even though it's going to be hard. She was very tender and caring, and my sons were there, and she said, you guys can take as much time as you want, but we know that in the life of an animal, especially with your dog, that there comes a time where you know it's the end of their life, and this is a very merciful, beautiful way to help them go out of this life. You could feel the tenderness in the room, And now I am not one to be that, uh, showing of my tenderness. It's inside. I feel it and it is there, but I don't cry. And I usually don't say, I I, I don't give really any indication that I'm either sad or tender or, you know, feeling a little bit sensitive or emotional. However, everyone else in the family, (laughs) you know, giving the, giving the dog its last love as, as we're there. And so then she explained the process to us. 
as far as what would happen. They're giving him a little, they're, they're going to give Coco a little sedative that will help him relax and get some sleep. And then the vet, veterinarian will come in, the vet will come in and administer a uh, dose of it anesthesia that basically first will put him to sleep and then basically his heart will stop. So she explained all of that, went out of the room again, gave a little bit more hugs and loves to Coco. And then she came back in with the sedative. Bowen was holding Coco, gave him the sedative. He had a little bit of a pain with that, but you know, it relaxed him. And, and then, uh, you know, several minutes later, probably 10, Five, five to seven minutes later, said, we called them back in and said, okay, it's time. So the vet came in with the next step of the process, uh, administered the anesthetic, to, and she was great too. She just explained everything that would be happening as we went along. She just said, he's going to go to sleep. He'll look very calm and peaceful, and then his heart will stop, and he'll be gone. It was one of those moments where you know, as I describe it to you and you think about, you know, a beloved pet that you've had in your family for a long time, it's a tender moment. And as soon as he, so he fell asleep and that the doctor monitored his heartbeat until, until that heartbeat stopped. And then she said, okay, he's now passed. And of course the tears started to flow from most everyone in the family, <laughs> everyone Except for me, I didn't have the tears flow, but I felt tender. And it was really neat to see Bowen and Chance just giving him loves and hugs. And Jamie was upset by it as well. And I was asking, before before we got there, before we went to the vet, I was asking everyone in the car what it was that they loved about Coco. What were some of the things that were happy memories and that were going to remain happy memories? Everyone was describing those things. Then when we got back in the car after he had passed, we then were talking about still some of those happy memories, and some of the things that maybe we didn't quite expect as far as when he passed and what, what the feelings were and how we'd miss him and in what ways. And the thing that I saw, and I think the thing that made me the most tender was the passing of an era where this was the dog that we had for all of our time together. This was the dog that, you know, was always happy to see you, except for honestly the last two years of his life. He was very, he was not doing very well at all, but he was always happy to see you. Never, ever was upset or angry with you. You know, every once in a while I'd have to scold him just a touch because he was nipping at maybe a small child and as, as a small dog, pretty protective of themselves. I mean, they kind of have to be, they're not, they're fragile. So they're not the most uh, sturdy of dogs. There's ways that they can get hurt pretty quickly. And sometimes when little kids would be a little too rough or getting there, they'd, he'd snip at them and I'd have to scold him because no matter what, he's still the dog. And as the dog, humans get the priority. What was great about him, though, is he responded to that. He was great about it and wouldn't do it again. The other thing the other thing we remembered with Coco is one time he had gone outside, you know, take care of his business and wouldn't come back in. And Jamie had to go. And she's like, well, I got to go. So good luck. Now, when I say go outside, he went outside in the front yard. And he's honestly pretty good about sticking around. He is not a dog that runs off. But he wouldn't come back in. So Jamie left. And when she came back, he was there on the front porch laying down. And she, and never again did he ever question the command of, go, of going in after we left. Because uh, he did not enjoy being outside. I think it was inclement weather. And so he wasn't enjoying this freedom, this newfound freedom that he had. So he, he never left again. The reason I bring all that up is because he was a great dog. In all honesty, great dog. He did cost me a little bit of cash. And when I say that, I think that there was a secret plot going on in the family at some at one point in time. There was a plot that was going on to get new carpet or to get new floors. It wasn't even new carpet, but to get new floors in the dining room. And so 
he had, Coco had at one one point, he, he was sick and he had just poofed all over the flooring, which was carpet at the time that was in our formal dining room. And Jamie had wanted to switch that out for quite some time. <laughs> so I think what had happened is she gave him a little bit of chocolate or something like that, that gave, that, that then we just had to rip. Honestly, it was so bad. We were not, that, that carpet was not being cleaned. So we ripped it all up and got new floors throughout the, actually throughout the entire main floor, we got new, new, uh, new flooring. So I think that there were some of those plots that were going on. Um, but other than that, he just was a great friend to all of our kids. Each one loved him in a certain way and, and the way that they did. It was just, it was just really, really neat. Saying all of that and putting it together, yeah. as you look at being consistent in your life, just before I go on about what I was going to say, I was at meetings all day today, and one of the one of the things that was discussed is the need to be consistent that variability doesn't allow you to really trace problems. It doesn't allow you to see where the problem may be and then correct for it. When you have consistency, you're able to see where the problem is and then correct for it. And if the correction is incorrect, in other words, it didn't really work, then you're still minimizing the variability such that you can correct for that particular problem, whatever it may be. Now, why did I go off on that tangent in regards to telling you all about the, the dog and everything that happened? It's this. Coco, no matter what, was always happy every time you saw him. It was so consistent that you knew when you walked in the door, he would bring to you a sock and he would have his tail wagging and be as happy as he could be to see you, which is why, and I believe that many dogs have that same temperament. I don't know if all dogs do because I don't know all dogs in the world, but I know that many dogs have that temperament. When you put a dog down or when it's time, when it's that dog's time, what has endeared that dog to you is the consistency of their happiness to see you. I know that there has been many a metaphor about the consistency of a dog's happiness. And here's what I'll say. If we could have that amount of consistency, then what we would then be able to do with each other, I, I, I mean, just imagine how we would feel about one another and what that would look like. Just imagine how amazing you'd feel and how difficult it might be to have that person, whoever it might be, not in your life. The consistency of the happiness brings about the long-term relationship. It brings about strengthening the relationship. As you think about your life, and if you really want to increase relationships, a simple streak may be to Smile at someone at least one time daily. Be happy to see them. Have joy in their being in you, you being together with them. This is where you start to build the relationship. And if you do that every single day and you track it, and you make it laughably simple. It doesn't have to be anything that's out of this, out of the ordinary. I mean, Coco. Every time he came to the door, it was just tail wag and smiling. I mean, it's not like he had a great big conversation with you. It's that he was there for your return and he was happy to see you. And if you start to build your consistency in a particular area, such as smile at least one time daily, and then you notice that maybe with that consistency, no variability, that something's not improving, then you can work on whatever the relationship problem is because you've removed some of the inconsistency. 
you've removed the variableness, at least in one area. And when you do that, it gives you the opportunity to improve the relationship. Think about your marriage. If you, for example, one of our streakers has a streak to say to his wife and she to him, I love you because. That said, every single day gives him the opportunity to think about, here's all the reasons why I love you. And I love you because you did this for me today, or you look pretty today, or you, whatever it is, when you get really consistent with that, imagine the consistency of that, what it would do for your marriage relationship. And if your marriage is in trouble, or if you feel it's like it's not going in the right direction, imagine what that would do for you, that consistency. Now, it's not going to change everything overnight. And in fact, you have to be consistent at it for quite some time in order to be believable, to be believed, to get the trust. That's another thing that's part of trust is that consistency. You have to be, er, be consistent at the behavior, and then you start to get the trust. As you do that, then you can start to identify what some of the problems may be. And you'd be surprised, I think, that a lot of the problem in the marriage, when you start to do that, might be you. Think about it with your children, all right? You are, you are having a hard time with your children. There's rebelliousness. There's whatever else that's going on. Take a look at yourself and say, what streak might I set to remove inconsistency or variableness and make it a positive one? I'm going to compliment one of my children at least one time daily. Sincere compliment. I'm just going to compliment them. And by the way, the sincere compliment, it doesn't have to be hard or, or ridiculous. It's like, uh, you know, I just want to compliment you on what what you said today to your sister. That was really neat. I want to compliment you on, you know, your hair. It looks beautiful. I want to compliment you on how you helped your mother. But you are actively searching for, seeking for, looking to compliment them what will that do to you and to your children? You will be amazed at what that consistency through time will do to change the entire environment of your household. You can apply to work. Same thing. Start complimenting a co-worker at least one time daily. Compliment at least one co-worker daily. Or try... Pray for one coworker daily. What will that do for you and your environment at work? It is the streak activity that operationalizes many of the concepts that are taught in the best business books. It is the streak of every day. If you want to do it more like a work week, so five times a week, you're doing it. That then removes variableness and gets you to a place where you can really start to assess what is the culture of our family? What is the culture of our workplace? What is the, what is the relationship culture of our marriage? Whatever it is, you can start to assess because you've gotten consistent. And oftentimes, the consistency will be, the streak will be not only the, re the revelator of what might be inconsistent or the problem, but it may also be the solution. That is why you want to start a streak. That is the opera opera operational principle of operational system of any principle. And yeah, say that three times fast, right? I can get that out. As we look back to the life of our dog, Coco, and I just think about it, just a tribute to those faithful pets who unfailingly, consistently, always are excited to see you. We'll miss you, Coco. And hopefully, streakers, you have not only a great relationship that you see with your pet, whatever that, whatever that relationship is, but also you start to improve those relationships in your family and the ones that matter in significant and real ways.
If you'd like to learn more about streaking, you could do so by buying the book at Amazon, Barnes Noble, or wherever books are sold. It's a great Christmas gift. You can also subscribe to this podcast, give it a rating, let us know how we're doing. In the comments, feel free to comment on any one of these episodes to talk about maybe some of the streaks in your life or the consistency in your life that you've been able to achieve and what that's done for you. One other thing is download the Streaking app. In the Streaking app, it's the social self-improvement, positive self-improvement program or app, sorry, not program, but app that you've ever had. All kinds of people are commenting on and posting what it is they do in order to complete their streaks and what those streaks are. It's absolutely fascinating, really fun to see. A lot of great people in there. So get on there. You can start your streaks, mark them off, share them. You can also invite others to a streak that you're doing. In other words, invite them to do the streak as well. You can do that through your text or anything else. It's a really great uh, feature if you want to get your family all going on a specific streak or if you want to get co-workers going on a specific streak, just invite them to it. Create the streak in the streaky app and then invite them to join you in that streak. Well, that, my friends, is all I have for today. Until we talk again, keep streaking. <laughs>